Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney a little too seriously. I'm Austin Rathall. I don't remember when I first saw The Lion King. It feels like it's always existed, and the original has been my favorite Disney movie for as long as I can remember. I love it not only for its great story and characters, but because it combines so many elements that shouldn't work well together. It's like a painting that uses a broad range of color, or a song that uses every note. The Lion King is somehow a biblical epic, and a Shakespearean drama, and a kitty flick, and a musical comedy, and a war film. Not only is it a version of all those things, but it's a good version of them. There are other movies like that, but they're few and far between. One word that people don't usually use to describe The Lion King, though, is historical. There are no humans in the film, so tracing it to a historical setting might seem impossible. However, there are some clues as to the setting for Simba's story. So let's analyze the clues and see if we can tell when and where both versions of Disney's The Lion King take place. The Lion King features many types of animals, so examining each species and finding out where they live should give us an idea of where the film takes place. The most prominent animals are, of course, the lions. However, having lions in the film doesn't tell us much, since historically lions have lived all over Africa. We also see a large group of hyenas, but hyenas have lived all over Africa too. Several other characters belong to species with a more limited range. Zazu is a hornbill, and those exist around several parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Rafiki is a mandrill, and their population is limited to western Africa, specifically around Gabon. Of course, we can't forget Timon and Pumbaa. Warthogs like Pumbaa live in various parts of Africa, but meerkats like Timon specifically live in Africa's southern tip. Now, wildebeests also play a prominent role in the story and the ones that, spoiler alert, kill Mufasa appear to be blue wildebeests. Those live in various parts of southern Africa, but they do have a few populations farther to the northeast. All of those are just a fraction of the film's animals, though, because this movie has just about every type of African animal imaginable, especially when you include the live-action version. There are animals from all over Africa in this movie, and you could use the film's wildlife to argue that it takes place just about anywhere on that continent. Luckily, there are some other clues to examine. There are three main locations in The Lion King. The Pride Lands, the Desert, and the Jungle. In each of those locations are various landmarks. One of the first landmarks we see for the Pride Lands is this mountain. That's Mount Kilimanjaro, which stands near the border of Tanzania and Kenya. The main landmark that's notable in the Pride Lands is, of course, Pride Rock, and that resembles a real rock formation called Fisher's Tower in Kenya's Great Rift Valley. Now, much of the Pride Lands also resembles Kenya's Great Rift Valley, and that resemblance is no coincidence. Animators visited that valley to research for the film. The filmmakers also seem to confirm that the film takes place in Kenya in the audio commentary for the movie. Kenya, two years later. <laughs> <laughs> However, they also mentioned the Serengeti. Cloud shadows moving across the uh, Serengeti. And in one making a featurette, director Roger Allers mentions the Maasai Mara National Reserve as a possible inspiration. The image of the plains of the Maasai Mara, the, the broad flat plains and the flat acacia trees. All of that might seem contradictory until you realize that those three locations are relatively close to one another, so they could each form part of Simba's great kingdom. In the audio commentary for the 2019 version of Lion King, director Jon Favreau said that Disney actually documented all of the locations that animators used as inspiration for the original, and that his team used those same locations as inspirations for their version. In fact, the 2019 team visited Kenya themselves to research for the remake. All this indicates that both the animated and photoreal versions of Lion King are set in the same place, and that place is most likely Kenya, since it inspired so much of the Pride Land scenery. What about the desert? Africa has multiple deserts, and one in northern Kenya, called the Chalbi Desert, strongly resembles the one Simba travels through. Africa also has multiple jungles, like the one Timon and Pumbaa live in. John Favreau stated that Timon and Pumbaa live in a type of high-altitude jungle called a cloud forest. 
Kenya's Taita Hills region is a cloud forest, as is the Harena forest in neighboring Ethiopia. So it's possible that Simba lived in the Great Rift Valley, traveled north through the Chalbi Desert, lived with Timon and Pumbaa in the Harena forest, and then retraced that route to return to his pride. Now that's a large area to cover, but the films never tell us exactly how long it takes Simba to travel from place to place, and he would probably have to live a fair distance away from Pride Rock to remain undiscovered as long as he did. The only problem with making Kenya the movie's setting is that species like mandrills and meerkats don't live in this region. However, we know that Timon is a wandering outcast, and Rafiki appears to live alone in his tree near Pride Rock. Since he has no apparent family in the area, it's possible that he's not a native of the Pride Lands, and that he traveled there from somewhere else. Identifying where the Lion King takes place is easy compared to trying to identify when it takes place. There are no humans or human artifacts in the film whatsoever, so to identify the film's period, we need to look elsewhere. I scoured the internet for an answer to this question, and I found a lot of fan theories. A lot of people think that The Lion King takes place in ancient Greek times because Disney's Hercules is seen wearing Scar's pelt at one point. Now, I'm inclined to think that that's just an Easter egg, and other people online pointed out that since Scar is killed by hyenas in the middle of a wildfire, there'd probably be no pelt left for Hercules to find. Other people think that the movie takes place in an alternate universe where humans never exist. That's an interesting theory, but there's really no evidence for it one way or the other. And other people think that The Lion King takes place in modern day because there are references to modern day songs, like It's a Small World and The Lion Sleeps Tonight. I'm also inclined to think that those are simple Easter eggs. I think that trying to use them as evidence that The Lion King takes place in modern times is kind of like trying to prove that Aladdin takes place in modern times because the genie can transform into Jack Nicholson. Although some people do believe that theory, and that's fine. I think to truly understand when The Lion King takes place, we need to turn to a more authoritative and less ambiguous source, something like other canon media. Now, The Lion King has lots of spin-off material, including sequels. However, the sequels don't have any humans in them either. There is only one show I know of in The Lion King universe that features humans, and it's the Timon and Pumbaa cartoon. If you're not familiar with the show, it follows the zany adventures of Timon and Pumbaa as they travel the world and meet many new characters, both human and animal. However, the show makes zero historical sense, and when I say zero, I mean absolutely zero. For example, in one episode, they meet with an employment agent in the middle of the jungle who gets them temp jobs on a pirate ship. In another, they take a train to the Old West from the jungle. And finally, there's one where they try to visit Las Vegas, but somehow end up in ancient Rome by mistake. Now come on, Simba, we're in Rome, so let's get the Roman. Aconius Matatimus. What? So I'm going to go ahead and say that that show is probably not canon. There is another piece of media that may hold an official answer to the question. In the 90s, Disney published a Lion King magazine, which had activities and stories set in the world of the movie. One of those stories was called Two-Legged Creatures. In it, Timon, Pumbaa, and young Simba hear about a mysterious race called the Watu. These are two-legged creatures that wandered the land long ago and supposedly left behind drawings in a nearby cave. The trio visits the cave, and inside they find cave paintings, baskets, and spears. They fall asleep inside, and while they're sleeping, Simba dreams that two of the Watu return to the cave, gather up many of their belongings, and then leave. When Simba wakes up, he finds that many of the Watu items are in fact gone, so he must not have been dreaming after all. This story is much more similar in tone to the film, and it doesn't historically contradict itself like the Timon and Pumbaa cartoon does, so it may very well be canon, and if it is, then it indicates that humans do exist in the universe of The Lion King, but they're still living as hunter-gatherers. Archaeologists even discovered a cave with artifacts very similar to those described in the story. The cave was in Kenya's Rift Valley, and the artifacts inside were roughly 10,000 years old. That means the movie most likely takes place after humans have arrived on Earth, but before the dawn of civilization. Of course, the most definitive source for when the film takes place would be a statement from filmmakers. However, filmmakers have said next to nothing on this question. I did, however, find one time when one filmmaker went on the record with a comment on this topic. Rob Minkoff was a co-director on the original Lion King, and in 2017, he sat down with the YouTube channel Screen Junkies to film a reaction to their honest trailer for The Lion King. During that video, the topic of when the film takes place came up, 
And this is what he had to say. You know, the thing the thing was is that there was no people, right? Because right. it's when we, we often talked about that. We're like, are people do people exist? Did this movie take place before mm -hmm. civilization, before humanity? Cool. Possibly did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's your stance? You think possibly? I think possibly, yeah. This is before humankind? I think before, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's as close to an official statement as we're likely to get, and it confirms what the magazine story suggests, that the Lion King exists in our world, but before the dawn of civilization. Based on the movie's wildlife, landscape, and related media, I am placing the Lion King in Kenya's Rift Valley in prehistoric times circa 8,000 BC. So there you have it. That is my theory for when and where both versions of Disney's The Lion King take place. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of my conclusions and when and where you think the movie takes place. Also, don't forget to tell me which Disney movie you would like me to analyze next. I wasn't planning on doing this movie, but I decided to do it after I saw you request it in the comments, so please keep those requests coming. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another video and our channel has a chance to grow. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.